turn off rapidly. If it does, the electrical part of the system is not at fault and the injector must be replaced. If the light does not flash, check the electrical connector and retest. If it still does not flash, there's a problem in the wiring or in the engine computer system. Please refer to the proper service manual for further diagnosis. Hard starting when the engine is fully warm can be caused by fuel injectors that stick open and leak fuel into one or more cylinders after engine shutdown. Once again, identifying a fuel injector that sticks open and leaks fuel is a little more difficult on a multi-port fuel injection system than on a throttle body system. One method used to check for leaking injectors is to remove and inspect the spark plugs one half hour after engine shutdown. A wet spark plug could be an indication of a leaking injector. If a leaking fuel injector is found, replace it. You can also check the fuel pressure to help determine if any of the injectors are leaking. First, attach a fuel pressure gauge to the Schrader valve located on the fuel rail. While attaching the pressure gauge, a small amount of fuel spray may be noticed. Wear eye protection and use a shop towel to prevent excessive fuel spray from getting on the engine. Turn the key to the run position. This will pressurize the fuel system. Once pressurized, turn the key off and note the fuel pressure. If fuel pressure drops continuously after shutdown, a leaking fuel injector may be the cause. Remember, other conditions such as a fuel pump check valve, a leaking pump connector, or a faulty fuel pressure regulator could also cause pressure loss. These areas must be checked before systematically replacing the injectors. Let's quickly recap the procedures for testing multi-port fuel injectors. A single faulty fuel injector will most commonly not create a no-start condition, but can create certain drivability symptoms as described. If your engine idles rough or isn't running on all the cylinders, you can start by performing a resistance check on each injector. Disconnect the electrical connection. Set your ohm meter on the lowest scale. Connect the leads from the ohm meter to the terminals of the injector. Read and record the resistance of each injector individually. Compare your readings to those listed in a service manual and replace any that are not within specifications. To test for partially clogged injectors, listen to them while the engine is running with a stethoscope. Good injectors will have a crisp and metallic clicking sound while running. Any injectors with dull or muffled sounds should be replaced. To help keep injectors clean, we suggest using a bottle of fuel injector cleaner in the gas tank every two to 3,000 miles or once a month. If no clicking sound is heard from an injector, disconnect the electrical connector and connect the fuel injection test light, commonly referred to as a Noid light. Start or crank the engine and watch for the light to flash. No flashes indicate a problem in the electrical circuit or the engine computer. The last check is for leaking injectors. Remove and check the spark plugs a half hour after the engine's been shut off. A wet spark plug could be an indication of a leaking injector. Another check you can perform to help identify a leaking injector is a fuel system pressure test. Connect a fuel pressure gauge to the Schrader valve fitting on the fuel rail. Start the engine and read the pressure on the gauge. Shut the engine off and watch the pressure. A continuous drop in fuel pressure could be caused by a leaking fuel injector. The items you will need to replace multi-port fuel injectors include a 3 8 drive socket set, a standard and metric wrench set, a set of screwdrivers, a service manual such as a Hanes for your particular vehicle, and the correct replacement fuel injectors. The removal and replacement of multi-port fuel injectors can vary from being relatively easy to quite complex. Before replacing your multi-port fuel injectors, we recommend consulting a Haynes manual for details involved in the procedure on your particular vehicle. The first step before disconnecting any part of the fuel system on an injected vehicle is to relieve the residual pressure within the system. There are several different methods for doing this. On many vehicles, you can simply disconnect the wires leading to the fuel pump near the fuel tank, or remove the fuse for the electric fuel pump. Start the engine and allow it to run until it dies. This will purge the system of residual fuel pressure. Many Ford vehicles are equipped with an item called an inertia switch, which you can tap with the handle of a screwdriver to disarm the fuel pump. 
Once again, you must start the engine and allow it to run until it dies to relieve the pressure. Consult the service manual, such as a Hanes, for the specific location of the inertia switch on your vehicle. Another method on many vehicles is to locate the fuel system pressure regulator, disconnect the vacuum hose leading to it, and in its place, connect a hand vacuum pump. Apply 25 inches of vacuum to the regulator, and it will relieve the system pressure through the return line to the gas tank. Certain vehicles equipped with Bosch type fuel injection will require you to remove the gas cap, disconnect the electrical connector from the injector nozzle, ground one terminal of the nozzle with a jumper lead, and with another jumper lead, run battery power to the other terminal of the injector nozzle. Touch the terminal several times to relieve system pressure. Do not, however, hold the positive lead onto the nozzle for more than two seconds at a time, as damage to the windings inside the nozzle could result. After fuel system pressure has been relieved on your vehicle, disconnect the negative battery cable before working on the fuel system. For vehicles not shown, refer to a service manual such as a Hanes to find the proper procedure for relieving fuel pressure. Depending on the vehicle, Parts of the intake manifold may have to be removed in order to gain access to the fuel injectors. For our demonstration, it is not necessary. Start by removing the vacuum hose from the fuel pressure regulator. Unplug the fuel rail wiring harness electrical connector. A small screwdriver may aid in releasing the locking tab. Remove all fuel rail retaining bolts and remove any other bolts or brackets that may still secure the fuel rail. If you are replacing more than one injector on a cylinder bank, it is a good idea to replace one at a time or label each injector lead to prevent a mix-up of the electrical leads upon reassembly. Unplug the electrical harness connector from the fuel injector that you are replacing. Using a gentle side-to-side -side rocking motion, carefully remove the fuel rail. On some applications, the fuel injectors will remain attached to the fuel rail and others will remain in the intake manifold. Carefully remove the fuel injector from the intake manifold or fuel rail. Be careful as some injectors are attached to the fuel rail with a lock ring or retaining clip. Before installing the new injector, lubricate the O-rings with fresh motor oil. Never use silicone or grease as you could clog the fuel injector or damage the oxygen sensor. Install the new injector onto the fuel rail or intake manifold and secure the fuel rail to the injectors in the reverse manner of disassembly. Reconnect the electrical harness connector onto the fuel injector. Attach any brackets or retaining bolts that were removed earlier. Reconnect the fuel rail wiring harness electrical connector and reattach the vacuum hose back onto the fuel pressure regulator. Reconnect the negative battery cable and rearm the fuel pump system by reinstalling the fuel pump fuse, resetting the inertia switch, or by reconnecting any electrical connectors removed earlier. With the vehicle in park or neutral and the parking brake set, turn the ignition key to the run position to pressurize the fuel system. Check all fuel line connections and injectors for fuel leaks. If a fuel leak is observed, immediately shut the key off and correct the problem before starting the engine. If no fuel leaks are present, start the engine and test drive the vehicle to be sure of correct operation. Let's briefly recap the procedures involved in replacing your multi-port fuel injectors. As always, the first step whenever working on a fuel injection system is to relieve the residual pressure within the system. Disconnect the negative battery cable. Continue by removing any electrical connections, bolts, or brackets that are attached to the fuel rail. Using a gentle side-to-side -side rocking motion, lift up on the fuel rail. Be careful not to dislodge any of the injector nozzles from it. Label the position of the electrical connections before disconnecting them. Disconnect the electrical connector from the injector. Release the locking ring or retaining clip.